Hi everyone and welcome to February Faves and Fails. This is a roundup of all of the products that I've been trying in and around the month of February, both on and off camera. The ones that I have been absolutely loving and the ones that just fell a little bit short. I wasn't gonna make this video this month. I was gonna make a Faves and Fails maybe every couple of months from here on in, but I had so many products that I've been trying off camera that I wanted to talk to you about that didn't fit in any of the other products projects I've been working on. It, it just needed to be done anyway. Let's get straight on with it. If you are new here, hi, my name's Gemma. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you do that in this video today. And also show this video some love with the like button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. So first product up is actually not a new favorite. It's an old favorite. I've spoken about it a lot, so I'm gonna keep this short. I just wanted you to know that the Dr. Sam's Flawless Moisturizer Intense, which used to own only be available in a 50 mil size is now available in a jumbo 100 mil size. So if you absolutely love this as much as I do and you're constantly running out and having to reorder, this should be music to your ears as it was to mine. I love this stuff. Next up, we have a fragrance that I was hoping to get for Christmas. I didn't actually get it for Christmas. No violins necessary. Wes bought me this for Valentine's Day and I was so appreciative, mainly for the reason that I now don't have to embarrass myself walking through flannels, taking the sample bottle that is on display in flannels department store and dousing myself in it within an inch of my life and then walking very quickly out of the store, knowing for a fact that I would not be buying this myself. I now have one of my own. You know, I do still douse myself in it on the odd occasion every single time I go in. Anyway, I now have one of my own. I love it. It's by, by Killian and it is Woman in Gold. It is everything that I love in a fragrance. It just sparks off those memories, those really warm, fuzzy memories that I have with my nanny and my nan. Um, it's a really oldie worldy fragrance, but it has those tones in there that bring it into the 21st century. There's something very, very special about this fragrance. It's floral and yet it's woody, it's hearty, it's a little bit spicy, slightly heavier than a fragrance that I will probably take into spring and summer, but for now, I just, I can't get enough. So the top notes are bergamot, mandarin, and aldehyde. You've then got middle notes of vanilla absolute, rose, which is very prominent, geranium, also very prominent, and freesia. And you've then got base notes of vanilla, akigala wood, tonka bean, and patchouli. Mm. Can't get enough. Moving on to talking about the Zip Halo. Love this. Only gonna talk about it briefly because it has just featured in my pro aging product superheroes video. This has completely blown me out of the water. It seriously blew my mind. Not a big fan of microcurrent devices for many reasons, but this one, this one I can cope with. I have a really high pain threshold and I can cope with devices that give me a little bit of discomfort. This one doesn't give any discomfort whatsoever. I am, however, an extreme wimp when it comes to electronic pulsing sensations, that vibration, that little bit of fuzzy feeling on the skin that some microcurrent devices can give you. This did not give me any of those feelings, so perfectly manageable for me. And the lift and the sculpt that this gives immediately is second to none. It's absolutely phenomenal. I use it with the Zip Electric Complex Conductive Gel. There are other gels that you can use it with, but I think the, you know, the generic one is is perfectly adequate for what I use it for. I don't feel the need to upgrade to the other gels that have more skincare benefits in them. I apply my skincare after this. I don't need it in the gel. So absolutely love this device. Would now no longer be without it. I now know why my mum loves it so much. 
Again, I do have an offer code that featured in that video. I will put it on the screen now for you and in the description box just in case you want to get your hands on it, but it's a love, 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 love. Moving on to hair care. This first product is relatively new for me, but my hair is absolutely loving using it at the moment, so I wanted to mention it. It's the L'Oreal Professional Metal Detox Glycophilla 2% Plus Ironing, and it's the Professional Pre-Shampoo Treatment. Now, I pre-treat my hair prior to washing every single time now because I watched a lot of Abby Young videos. Abby Young's training to be a trichologist. She knows a lot about the subject, and she's got beautiful hair. And if she suggests that I do it, I'm gonna jump on that and my hair has gone from strength to strength ever since I've been paying more attention to my hair's wants and needs. This is a lovely product. You don't have to use this every single time you wash your hair. I personally don't. I like to switch up my pre-treatments as I see fit, but you can definitely use this one every single time as well if you want to. So this is an anti-porosity filler system. So when your hair is porous, it's much more vulnerable to breakage and damage. This fills in all those holes, preventing that breakage and also any color shift. So if you do have color treated hair like me, this will hopefully make your colour last longer as well. It also has that signature metal detox scent, which is absolutely stunning. I mean, it just makes me smile every single time. And the extra thing that I love about this is you don't have to sit with this on your head for 10 to 20 minutes. You can apply this, you massage it in for around about a minute, and then you just rinse it straight off. There is no waiting around, no, you know, looking at your clock constantly. It's instantaneous. Wash it out, shampoo, condition, out the door. So I do speak highly of the entire Metal Detox range. I think they are all stunning products. My personal favorite are the pre-treatment and also the leave-in oil, which you can also use as a heat treatment. I used to use the shampoo and the conditioner religiously. They are beautiful products. If you still use those, there is absolutely nothing wrong with them whatsoever. It's just I found a different shampoo and conditioner which suited my hair slightly better. So that's what I've moved on to. And that's what I want to talk about now. Now you may remember that a while ago in my They Made Me Buy It video, I was enticed by Angie from Hot and Flashy through one of her videos to buy the Oribe Gold Lust little miniature set, you got a mini shampoo, a mini conditioner, and a mini texturizing spray. I absolutely loved it, unfortunately for me, so I invested in the full-size shampoo and the full-size conditioner, which cost over £110 to buy those together. Now, before you all start shouting at me, there was sort of a method to my madness. I know it's a ridiculous amount of money to spend on a shampoo and conditioner, but my hair absolutely loves the shampoo and conditioner to the point where I was getting out of the shower, wrapping my hair in a fast dry towel, and then literally half an hour later, spending five minutes drying my hair, and it looks like this. I don't heat style it, there are no straighteners involved, it just sits really nicely, no flyaways, no frizziness, this is how it is. So I just thought if I'm not going to be heat treating my hair, if I'm not going to be damaging my hair even more, then maybe these are worth it for me. I am not by any way saying that these are going to be worth it for everybody because it's excruciatingly expensive. However, there is a deal to be had. So the shampoo and the conditioner are around about 110 pounds to buy out, right? This set, which is a full-size shampoo, a full-size conditioner, and a hair mask, 105 pounds. So you're getting one extra product and you're actually paying less than if you were to just buy the shampoo and the conditioner combined. So I've beaten that to death. I just wanted to mention it fleetingly. I've ended up hovering over the subject for a little bit longer than necessary. And what a lovely box, gorgeous box. And the packaging inside is equally as beautiful. I am nowhere near finished my full size shampoo and conditioner, but I wanted to buy this. This is not PR, I bought this with my own money. I wanted to buy this just 
for future because it's a really good deal and I am going to continue using the shampoo and conditioner, so why not get another product in with the price? Let's jump into a fail quickly. This is from Beauty Pie and it's the Everyday Great Skin Foundation. A while ago, I was trying on, what was I trying on? I can't remember what I was doing on my skin. It might have been concealers. I think it was. I think it was a concealer video and I had a foundation on my skin and it had turned a lovely shade of tangerine. This is the one. This oxidizes on me so badly. It's so unfortunate because the formula itself is really quite nice. It makes my skin look slightly airbrushed, not fully airbrushed, but slightly airbrushed. And for the price, I thought I was on to a winner, unfortunately, within the space of around 10, 15 minutes. The orangeness started to shine through. It deepened in shade considerably, so my neck was a completely different tone to my face. I've gone through three different shades, hoping that it's just the shade that I picked that was the problem. Unfortunately not, all three shades did the same. I have passed this on to my mum, she had the same experience. She thinks it's a really nice foundation, but nothing overly special. So yeah, she gave it back to me. What can we say? I think that says it all. Next up, we've got the NARS Power Matte High Intensity Lip Pencil. I did not think I was going to like this. I only ordered one of them because I thought it was just gonna be a dud on me. Generally, matte lip pencils, matte lipsticks don't look good on me. They also don't like my lips or rather my lips don't like them. They make my lips go dry and crusty. I had a completely opposite experience with these. They are lovely. They glide on really smoothly, very easy to apply. I have this on today. The colour is Mm, it's gorgeous. It is intense. I wish they had some other shades within the range that were suitable for really fair skin tones. I have very small lips, so if I put anything too deep or too dark on them, it makes them look even smaller. So I wish they had some lighter tones within the range as well. They are all quite vivid, but this one is definitely my favorite. I would wear it every single day of the week. I don't need a lip liner. I can just apply this straight to the lips. It is like a bit of a chubby stick, so it depends on how accurate you can be with a pencil. If you prefer your lips to look really clean and finished off, you might want to line your lips prior to using this, but I didn't today and I think it's a lovely finish. I do put a little bit of lip balm on prior to applying this like I do any matte product. I don't think this is flat matte. There is a little bit of a sheen on the surface, but this definitely doesn't make my lips look crusty or dry in the slightest and it lasts all day, even if you pre-treat your lips, which is not the same as a lot of other lipsticks and lip pencils if you apply them over the top of either a lip gloss or a lip balm. Now you may have heard me talk about the original YSL Lash Clash Mascara. I've owned it in brown for a really long time. I absolutely love it. I love the wand. I love the formula. I love how it coats the lashes, how voluminous it makes them look. And the brown that the Lash Clash comes in is so rich and beautiful. It just suits everyone. This is the waterproof version. I think at the moment it only comes in black. Please do correct me if I'm wrong because if it does come in the brown of the original Lash Clash, I am there to buy it immediately. It's absolutely wonderful and weirdly, Generally, when you get a waterproof version of a mascara that you love, it doesn't always hit the mark. It's not the same as the original because something happens in the waterproofing process that either loosens off the liquid, thickens up the liquid, and it never really applies the same or gives you a similar look. This one does. This coats the lashes beautifully, it gives volume, it gives va 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 voom whilst keeping the lashes separated. It makes me look like I have false lashes on. It did sort of 
weird me out a little bit that this is blue on the outside. When it first arrived, I thought, have they sent me a blue mascara? Blue mascara is definitely not me. I love blue mascara on other people. On me? Not so much, but I was a little worried that they sent me a blue mascara. This is just the colour packaging of the waterproof, so. I opened it immediately, looked and went, oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> Next up, we've got a brand new product from Stila. This is the Blush and Bronze Hydra Blur Cheek Duo. This is supposed to be a really hydrating and nourishing contour or bronzer and also blush. So it's dual ended. You get a bronzer or a contour stick on one end and then you get a beautiful shade of blush on the other. It does come in other shades. There isn't just this tone to choose from. So if you do have a deeper skin tone than mine, there will be one that will suit your complexion. I was just underwhelmed by the amount of pigment that you get from both of these products. I wish there was a little bit more because I love the tones. I think the undertone of the bronzer, you could use it as a contour and you could use it as a bronzer. The finish on the surface of the skin is really dewy. It's not a very dry formula. I think it's quite an oily formula, but it blends beautifully into the skin. Yeah, I was just a little bit underwhelmed by the pigmentation and the longevity. It didn't last a massive time. And because of the pigmentation of the bronzer slash contour shade, I couldn't apply this how I usually do underneath my foundation because you just couldn't see it at all underneath the foundation. The blush wasn't as much of an issue because I would apply that over the top of foundation anyway, but yeah, it was just a little bit nondescript, which, I think is a real, real shame because this could have been absolutely stunning and I'm sure it will be for a lot of people. If you're not wanting a lot of pigmentation in your product but you're still wanting that glow, you may absolutely love this. But for me, it just fell a little bit short. Next up, we've got the One Skin OS01 Eye Topical Supplement. I absolutely adore this. Again, I'm only gonna mention it fleetingly because it was in my last video. The research that's been done that's behind this product is superb and hats off to One Skin for doing so much research into 900 new peptides to settle on this one, which is solid. It is a solid peptide that has actually been proven that is the only peptide that can rewind biological age, which blows my mind. Anyway, I have been using this now for a good few weeks. It is beautiful. It's a beautiful consistency, silky smooth, sinks into the skin really nicely, doesn't sting, doesn't irritate, and does a lot of the things that a retinoid would do without any of the harsh side effects. So I am all for that. It does come at a price, but if you can't push the boat out yet, but you're wanting to give it a go, give me another month or two. I will feed back my results to you all so um, you can get a little bit more insight into this. I'm also trying out the body supplement, which has the same fantastic, phenomenal peptide in there. And I have been cheeky and asked them to send me the face supplement as well because I would love to apply this to my face. This did come in PR. I did not buy this with my own money. I don't think I would have bought this with my own money because I didn't know it existed, but I'm really pleased that I have it now because it's just lovely. And finally, let's talk about this brand new product from Charlotte Tilbury. I'm not always a big fan of Charlotte Tilbury skincare in general. The claims that they make just sort of go over my head. It's an eye roll moment. However, this one I really do like. It's the Magic Hydration Revival Cleanser. It's a really strange product in the sense that this comes out as a cream. It then foams slightly. It's not a dramatic foamy lather. And then it turns into a milk consistency. So it's a very strange way of washing your face, but it does the job and it feels 
really nice. So yeah, it's got hyaluronic acid, it's got peptides in there as well. And it, it just does the job. I'm not going to say that this is going to make you look 10 years younger because at the end of the day, it's a cleanser and cleansers don't tend to do that. But it does everything I need it to do. It takes off all of my makeup. It takes off any waterproof SPF that I have on my skin and it does it all without stripping my skin of the moisture that my skin needs to retain. So I really like it. If you're into Charlotte Tilbury skincare, this definitely has my seal of approval. One thing I didn't mention is that this struggles to remove my waterproof mascara. Not all waterproof mascara, but some of the waterproof mascaras I own, this struggles to remove. So if you are one of those people that likes to only use a foaming cleanser to take off your makeup, this one might not be for you. If you always use an oil cleanser or a balm cleanser anyway, you shouldn't have a problem with this. If you're one of those people that doesn't like using oil or balm cleansers as your double cleanse, if you like to use it first, but then use a foaming cleanser to make sure your skin is squeaky clean afterwards, this is a lovely one. So they are all of my product faves and fails for the month of February. I'd love it if you'd share your recommendations and your experiences in the comment section below. What products have you been really enjoying using throughout this month and also which products have disappointed you as well. Share your experiences with the rest of the pack. I have put another couple of videos over here that I think you might enjoy. Please don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. Hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.